So the last video has introduced the idea of how you find uh, a consumer's choices given prices, incomes, and their utility function. And the whole argument we made was graphical, right? So we said like, utility functions, find the tangency point. That's a pretty bad drawing there. Uh, but we kind of end up with this system of equations where the marginal rate of substitution is equal to a price ratio. And then you add to that a budget constraint two equations, two unknowns, and you're good. Now, in contrast, when we were doing, uh, when we were solving the problem for firms, we did sort of a similar thing, but we very quickly moved to this uh, representation of the profit maximization problem, right? Price times the production function is the output minus their total costs. So, why can't we do something similar for consumers, okay? We could figure out the amount of utility they get, we could figure out how much money they're spending, and so on. But the key, the, you know, the issue is that even though uh, consumers and firms both have sort of similar representations of their profit, of their preferences, like with these ISO quants or indifference curves, and ISO cost curves are kind of like budget constraints, there is one really important difference between the two, and that's that the consumer faces a constrained problem. So consumers are constrained. Firms face an unconstrained problem. What do I mean by that? Firms can decide how much capital and labor that they want to hire, uh, and they can get as much, like anything from zero to infinity, right? As much as they want. They don't have like a fixed budget that they have to use to try to uh, make as much profit with that budget as they can. Implicitly, we've got this assumption that they have access to finance and a bank that's going to loan them as much money as they want, as long as they're doing something profitable with the money, they can get a loan and they, they're just unconstrained. It's not an issue about whether they can afford it, it's just an issue about whether making that decision is profitable. Consumers are different. Consumers uh, don't have somebody to lend to them uh, as much money as they would like you know, to buy stuff, all right? Consumers instead have this set of choices and they have to choose from within it, okay? And because of this addition of a constraint it's not just that they choose like whatever level of food and shelter makes them most happy they have to choose whatever level that they can afford of food and shelter makes them most happy uh, and that calls for a different technique to solve a technique that we're going to spend this whole section sort of spelling out for us called the Lagrangian technique so we're not going to go too deep into the math of how what the Lagrangian is and how it works. This will be a little bit more like a cookbook approach to it, where I'll tell you how to use it and give you some basic intuition for what it's doing. Uh, but it's a really powerful tool that you can use to solve uh, consumer optimization problems, but really any problem where you're trying to maximize something or minimize something, but the choices, your uh, the set of options you have is limited in some way. So in the next video, I'll sort of take you through how you set it up and then we'll go through some examples.